Hey everyone. As I'm sure many of you are doing right now, we're in the process of spring cleaning. Um, and to a paranormal investigator, spring cleaning isn't necessarily just dusting. Um, for us, it's taking out all the equipment, making sure it's working properly, calibrating what needs to be calibrated, you know, and, and making sure it's stored away so that when we are going out to investigate again, we know where everything is, um, all the cords are there, the batteries are there, just making sure we're organized for that next investigation down the road. So, while all of our equipment is out and while we're calibrating and cleaning, I thought we'd take a second to examine some of the pieces of equipment that we use in our investigations a little more in depth than we normally do. I mean, during our videos we do talk about the pieces of equipment that gather evidence, but we don't really highlight them as much. So today, we're going to just take a look at some of the more common pieces of equipment that we use during all of our investigations. So starting with video cameras, starting with the video and, and the digital photos that we take, about 90 to 95 percent of everything that we do in terms of capturing visual evidence is done on these. Uh, this is a 4K uh, full spectrum GoPro camera. It is designed and modded uh, to see in the ultraviolet and the infrared spectrum of light. Uh, these are two spectrums of light that we cannot see. That's why it has that purplish and pinkish hue uh, when you see it on the screen. Um, these are really just so easy to use and uh, what also is nice is it can also double as a full spectrum uh, digital camera for still photos. It actually has a burst setting where it will take three pictures in sequential order very quickly, uh, which is what you want to do uh, when you're gathering uh, paranormal evidence. Sometimes you'll see modded digital cameras like this um, online. and. I don't recommend these. Uh, they're not expensive. A lot of times you'll find them on eBay. Even some of the, the, the ghost hunting uh, equipment websites will sell them, but it, it's tough. If you look through here, it's not a very clear picture um, that you get with this. Um, it just isn't. It's very grainy. Uh, it runs on, on a, it takes a lot of battery and a lot of battery power to use uh, something like this. But if you, you know, when you have these other cameras, there are, you want something very clear. You want something that's going to look, you know, more like this. Um, it's not grainy. It's not, you know, there's nothing in there. Like, I sp when we when I use this, the few times we've used it, I spent most of the time going, what is that? Is that a, is that a, is that granule? What is it? It just, you don't want to do that. You want what's on the screen. You want it to be very obviously something to look at further or very obviously not something to look at further. So I don't recommend these modded cameras. They're inexpensive. You can find them on eBay, but I don't recommend them. Um, another thing we use for taking infrared still pictures or video are these trail cameras. These are insanely useful. Um, we use these for, um, they can be activated for motion. So you can put it in an area that maybe you're not going to investigate a lot, but you want to keep an eye on. Something will trigger it, it'll take a video, or something will trigger it and it'll snap a couple of photos. Um, we haven't caught anything with this yet, but we've used it a couple of times and, and we've really liked it. Uh, something else visual that we do is the FLIR uh, thermal camera. We've had some luck with this, uh, especially at Grapevine Farms with the, uh, the, the image of the thermal girl. Uh, what you do is you take it into an iPhone or an iPad and you, uh, you plug it in and then the thermal will uh, project what it's seeing in front of it as you aim it um, as you go around a room. Um, I like the thermal camera. This one's not my favorite. This is a little finicky. Um, it's, it's a much more cost-effective way of doing thermal uh, than some of the really expensive things you see, but it's a little finicky. Sometimes the connection's not there, the battery sometimes dies quickly. Uh, but for a thermal imaging camera, it, it's, done, it's done a good job. It's just been a piece of equipment that I've been a little frustrated with, uh, and there's nothing worse during an investigation than fighting with the equipment. The GoPro camera, the trail cameras, they're, they're easy to deal with. Um, I, these are my, these are at, this is my absolute favorite thing. You might notice that it's, this one has a yellow sticker on it. We have yellow, um, blue, red, and green. Uh, for the four cameras, just so I can tell them apart. Uh, we do have another uh, 4K full-spectrum GoPro camera that I purchased recently uh, to try it out. It was a different model, a different company. Um, we also have a, a full-spectrum camcorder uh, that we use. Um, sometimes I don't like it. Um, it's not nearly as functional as these GoPro cameras are. And we buy most of the stuff that we buy, we buy from ghoststop.com, which is what most people I assume buy. A lot of ghost hunters, a lot of paranormal investigator groups buy from them. Uh, almost everybody we know uh, does. I check their website out. Their stuff's awesome. We buy most of our stuff there. So 
The last thing we have in terms of a camera is we do have a structured light sensor camera. Um, if you ever watch any of the TV shows, it's the stick figure camera. It's the equipment that uses the Kinect technology to map in a figure. If there's something significant enough to map in, it will map that in. We don't have the one you've seen on the show where it's handheld. Uh, we've actually put ours together using an old Microsoft Xbox Kinect and the cords and, and a tablet. Uh, so it's not very portable. Um, so I don't have it out right now because to coordinate that, it'd take up my whole office, <laughs> the space to do that. But that's something else that we have used in the past. Uh, we don't use it as much as we should. Uh, and I think we're going to try to use it more going forward. But that's just a look at some of the visual, the, um, the cameras, the, the, the video camera, the digital still photos. And what I'm going to talk about next is how in a dark room, the tools that we use to illuminate those rooms. So those cameras that are designed to see in pitch black can actually see in pitch black. So as I've said, this is an amazing camera. Uh, but it does have a problem. Uh, yes, it can see in the ultraviolet spectrum. It can see in the infrared spectrum. But without the correct source of light, it can't see anything. Um, without an IR floodlight, without UV light, it would look just as dark as a photo as if you were taking it with your cell phone in a pitch black room. So how do we do this? Well, the most common one we use on our, whenever you see a camera that's a, sta that's a stationary camera, we use this. This is a 90 foot IR floodlight. Uh, one of these illuminates the entire room and almost every clip you've ever seen us put online. This is a 10 Deluxe model. Um, bought it uh you know it's interesting i buy all my equipment uh from like a ghost stop or, or or a website like that i tend to buy the accessories from more common places whether it be an appliance store or or even online uh, mainly because the accessories seem to be less expensive um from a from a traditional retailer than they are from the specialty paranormal ones whereas the equipment is what you should get from them but as the accessories now we've got about six of these they're not that expensive but we put these on a bar with those cameras and they light up every room now if the room is bigger um but you, there are other options this is a 110 foot um ir floodlight uh that we'll use to light up a larger space because while that while this floodlight is very nice um, it does have a limitation. It's not as wide, um, whereas this is much wider. This is a much wider floodlight. Now, if you want to go to a big room, a big room, this, this baby is a 200-foot uh, IR floodlight that'll light up anything. It'll look like a baseball stadium <laughs> with how much it'll be lit up. Um, all of these things are plugged in through an adapter that can plug into a wall, but these, they make these neat adapters that, that aren't expensive. Um, these will, you can plug in through the, through the, um, the outlet, you plug them in as you would an adapter, but it's actually a nine volt, uh, battery, uh, very helpful, uh, since not every place that we investigate has power. Um, it's very helpful to be able to hook up a nine volt and you can do that on any of the, any of the floodlights that we have, uh, for that situation where there either isn't an outlet handy or the place just doesn't have power. Uh, yeah, there are other options for battery-powered uh, lighting. Uh, these, this is a battery-powered IR light and UV light. On the back here, you can actually put a 9-volt battery. And you turn on one, you get, excuse me, <laughs> you get infrared. You turn on the other, and you get UV. Uh, this is also something like that with a 9-volt in the back, except this is a wide angle. So when you have this one, it's going to look more like a spotlight. When you have this one, it's going to be more of a look more like a floodlight. Um, and these are the pieces of equipment that we use uh, to make it so that we can see and you can see uh, when we show all our evidence and we watch all our footage. Without these things, without these IR floodlights and these UV lights, we would be completely in the dark. So now we've talked about our cameras and the different IR lights that we use that enables our cameras to see in the dark. Let's talk about how we communicate. Let's show you some of the tools that we use for that. First and foremost is the digital recorder. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the backbone of our communication. We do all our EVP sessions. We record all of our Phasma Box sessions on this. Um, this is where the vast majority of our audio evidence, uh, this is where we're looking to capture it on. However, I will point out that our, our cameras that we use, our video cameras, do have microphones. and We do pick up a lot of EVP evidence 
um, on those cameras. Uh, but this is this tool is used in most of the tools we're gonna, I'm going to show you. This is used with it to make sure that we record it. So we can't do Fazobox, we can't do Spiritbox without using this. We can't even use Obulus without using this because this is where we're going to um, to gather that information and to, to review it and to listen to it later. So this is key. Now we use these like these Olympus recorders. Uh, this is what we use. Uh, I've had a lot of luck with these, really easy to use. The worst thing in the world is to have a complicated piece of equipment when you're fumbling around in the dark trying to get it to work. This thing, two buttons, on, off. And the coolest part about this for evidence review is it has this button on the back, USB pops right out, you pop it right into the computer, downloads everything. No fuss, no must, don't have to mess with any cards. I, these recorders are fantastic. We highly recommend them. Uh, the most second most common thing that we use for audio evidence is the Phasma box. Um, this is a piece of equipment that is very popular. Uh, we love it. I made an entire video on, on how this works and, and why we like it and some of the best pieces of evidence that we've captured on this. Uh, but again, what the Phasma box does is it uses sound bars and it puts those out there in the electromagnetic field and allows spirits to manipulate those sound bars to create an intelligent conversation, real-time intelligent, a lot of the time, responses. Um, there's a lot of reverb with this. Um, but we've gotten so many intelligent responses with it. And also what has happened is occasionally we'll pick up, this will say something, and then on the recorder we'll capture an EVP that repeats what the Phasma box just said, uh, which is great. When one piece of equipment validates another, oh, that is the best. The next communication tool I want to talk about is the SP7 Spirit Box. You can probably hear it going. Um, this is a pretty popular tool. If you watch a lot of the paranormal shows, they use this a lot. And what it's doing is it's scanning uh, radio stations. It's scanning uh, about 10 per second. And what it's doing is it's creating a white noise, which is easier for spirits to communicate in. That's the theory behind it. Um, we use this occasionally. We haven't had a lot of luck with this. We actually have two of them. Uh, the SB box, which has a built-in uh, memory card. Um, don't like this one very much. This one's all right. This one I'm good with. Uh, we, we're going to use this more. Um, a lot of people have a lot of success with it. We just haven't yet, um, but we're just going to keep using it because you know that's what you do. Is if you have a piece of equipment that doesn't catch evidence one day, it might capture the gold, capture the gold mine the next day. You never know. So we're going to continue to use it, but um, you probably haven't seen it a lot in our videos because we just really haven't caught anything with it yet. And the final piece of communication equipment I want to talk about is the Ovulus. Uh, everybody loves the Ovulus. Uh, this is a phonetic generator. What it does is it puts out a dictionary, about 500 words, out into the electromagnetic field and allows spirits to select uh, words from that dictionary. We have received a lot of very relevant words over the years um, through this piece of equipment. Uh, we've, we've gotten some ominous <laughs> words uh, through it. Um, you know, things that we, looking back, were like, oh, it was trying to tell us something. Um, so you, you get a lot of great great words through that the only thing is it doesn't it doesn't have a um it doesn't record the screen so much so we sometimes it does speak the words when it comes so that's again the recorder uh comes in handy for that but the nice thing about the obulus is there's a log in it that keeps track of all the words that came up because over the course of a night you could get a lot of words on it um so it does keep track so you can go back and 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 see what words came up if you didn't catch it on recorder you didn't catch it on camera you can still catch it uh, which is helpful. The only thing about the Ovulus is um, it's a little finicky around electronics. As, as you, it, it makes sense it would be. Uh, you get it close to something electric, it's going to start throwing words out because something around it is manipulating the electromagnetic field. Uh, so you can get some false positives that way, so you have to be very careful uh, when you are getting a bunch of words at once to, make to just know the environment. Know that, you know, is it a spirit or is it something on the outside? Uh, which, to be honest, is how you should look at every piece of evidence anyway, whether it's audio, visual, or in the ovulus. But it, but we love this thing. Um, it is my favorite piece of equipment. Uh, probably the most expensive piece of equipment, too. Uh, but we use it a lot, and we've gotten a lot of great results from it. So the final thing we want to talk about is some of the equipment that we use to register changes in the electromagnetic field. I mean, that's a lot of what we do. How do we sense motion? How do we sense temperature? How do we sense when something around us is changing? It's one thing to feel a cold spot, but to be honest, it, as an investigator, if you can't prove it, it really is just you saying you felt something. And as, in, as, in, as, as amazing as that is to feel when it's happening, 
it doesn't do anything for someone that, that, that isn't there for a skeptic that you want to show, hey, this is actually something that's real. So let's talk about some of the equipment that we use for that. Uh, the first thing um, that we'll talk about is the Melmeter. This is probably the most popular, uh, the most, I mean, pretty much every paranormal investigator we've ever met has one of these. Um, it's an EM detector. It's detecting ele electromagnetic energy. Uh, that's the big number here. The second number here is detecting temperature. So basically, as you go around and it spikes, these are milligauss, so it spikes a one, two, three, four, whatever it's doing. When, you, when you're walking around and you find a spot that's gone, that has a different level of electromagnetic energy, you look for an outlet. You look for something that could be causing it. But if nothing that makes it, nothing you, is there causing it, um, and it goes up and down, and there's an EM spike, that could possibly be something paranormal. It's the same thing with, with temperature going up and going down. Uh, fluctuations in temperature of over a couple degrees can be a sign of paranormal activity, and this thing does a great job of measuring both of those. Now we have a second uh, melmeter that we've bought, um, and this one has a couple other toys on it, which I absolutely love. Um, in this is a REM pod. It's a REM pod, so it, what it's doing is it's detecting energy in the area, and whenever it detects anything that comes within that, that interrupts its path, interrupts the um, the electromagnetic field that it creates, it's going to it's going to register that. Um, the other thing about this is pretty cool is there's a temperature alarm on here. There's a, this thing right here, um, this little nub. Sorry, that was the camera. <laughs> is it detects temperature, and if there's ever a severe drop in temperature, there's a light on the side. Now, if it goes down, it, it it's a lower tone. If it goes up, it's very high. I can only make it go up. I'll put my finger over it, and you'll see what what I'm talking about. See how that's glowing red? That te means the temperature is shooting up because the temperature just shot up five degrees. If I were to stick this in the freezer, the light would be blue and it would be going down and it would be a much lower, lower tone. So we use both of these uh, now in our investigations and that REM pod addition is extremely helpful now because when you're going around, not only do you see spikes in EM, uh, but you also have this helpful antenna which can also detect if something is within in, within that electromagnetic field that it creates, uh, disrupting it, that can cause the alarm to sound. We also have a, um, a portable version of a REM pod here, which also, if something comes within, you can see that it will sound the alarm. And if it's right there, all four, um, it has to do with the severity. The louder, the louder the siren, the more we're interfering with it. Um, and that's pretty much what we're looking for. We're looking for EM. Uh, we use a lot of these K2 units. This one's lighting up because I've got every piece of equipment in the world on my desk. <laughs> um, but it senses you go around and when it, you, and sometimes you can play a game with these where if, if it's most of the time it's just green. Um, like over here, if I back it way up away, it'll be more toward the green. But you know, these light up green when they're not sensing anything and you can put them in different parts of the room. We'll say, hey, can you t change that green light to orange? If you go up and touch that, it'll change. And sometimes you can get some intelligent responses. Um, make it go orange twice, you know, twice for yes, once for no, or something like that. Uh, can really create uh, an interactive experience that isn't necessarily communicating with words through the phasm box, the obulus, or a digital recorder, but you're registering an intelligent response. Um, using something completely different. And sometimes spirits react to that and sometimes they don't. Uh, we have a lot of instances where the K2s will be going off at the same time the Phasma box is going off. Like the, you'll, it'll, be, it'll light up and then the Phasma box next to it will get a response, one piece of equipment validating the other, which is always something that's great. Um, some other tools that we use, uh, we like to use these. This is a late, this is actually a security system. You want to talk about buying something that is not meant for paranormal investigation, but making it for paranormal? This creates a laser field between, and if anything breaks the field, an alarm goes off, which is good for an area that you're covering with a camera that you're not necessarily in. Um, if you're using it in an area where you're going to be walking around all night, you're just going to create a lot of alarms. Whereas, um, sorry, I'm, I'm near the uh, REM pod. <laughs> um, but if you, if, if you put it in an area where you're not going to be, much like the trail camera, um, it can really help you uh, keep an eye on, on, what it is that you, uh, on what it is that you're looking at. And if, you, if, you, if you're listening, it'll, when the siren goes off, boom, that's a hint that something might be going on. You rush over there and you start trying to communicate. Um, we also use things like motion sensors. You can put this in a hallway, on a stairway. Again, this is not something that is a paranormal tool. This is just something you'd buy for your house. 
um, but it's something that we use. Um, if there's motion, if there's footsteps, a place where people are, you know, there's reported of kids running up and down the hall or maybe a stairway where there are footprints heard. Uh, if you want to validate that those print, that those footsteps are actually happening and actually shaking the ground, something like this is a perfect tool to use. So that, but those are just some. Of, those are some of the main pieces of equipment that we use uh, to register activity, to to sort of validate the science of the temperature changes, the EM changes, just to help us, uh, you know, get some validity and some proof uh, that what we're experiencing and what we're seeing is actually happening. So there you have it. I turned my spring cleaning into something useful. Uh, we got to take a closer look at the way that we use our equipment, whether it be a video camera, you know, digital uh, full spectrum still photos, lighting up the room with IR light, or the communication tools, or even the tools we use to detect what's around us to help us investigate further and help us get better evidence. Uh, we've seen it all. Uh, this is the vast majority of what we use in our investigations. There's some other things here and there. Most of them are just temperature gauges, things like that. But this is the, these are the tools. Uh, that we use to get the evidence that we get. What was your favorite piece of equipment? Leave us a, leave us a comment uh, below. Let us know what you like the best. Let us know if there's a piece of equipment you want us to talk more about. I have done some behind the evidence videos um, on some of the equipment, most notably the Phasma Box and, and telling some of the stories there. Uh, but we'll be happy to, uh, to go more in depth on any of the things that, uh, that interest you and anything that you want to hear more about. So there you go. I got to finish cleaning. I got to put all this stuff back where it came from. Uh, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all healthy. And we'll We'll talk to you again soon. Take care. As always, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow our day to day adventures by liking our Facebook page. For any more information about us or to contact us directly, please visit our website www.orangecountynyparanormal.com.